I'm Mike Kovac, photographer. I've carried a camera into a lot of strange places. But this one, with the help of the police department, was the strangest. I suppose you were with your girlfriend at the movies between the hours of 9 and 12 last night. That's right, Lieutenant. What you got to do is check with it. Oh, we have. You know, it's funny. Every time there's a touch job, you're always at the movies with your girlfriend. <laughs> Anyone spot Billy Wyatt at the fire? OK, Wyatt. But someday a touch off is going up in your face, and we'll interrogate you at the morgue, and it's going to be a pleasure. Step back. All right, number four, step forward. Step forward! Turn that thing off and put it away. <laughs> all right, all right. I just don't know the rules, that's all. Well, the same here as they are in Detroit, Miller. You've been in lineups before. This is Dutch Miller, 35. Total of five years' time on seven counts of arson in Michigan. Yeah, all right. We know you can read. Watch your mouth. Now, you registered here last week. How have you been supporting yourself since you got to New York? I'm one of the idle rich. An old lady left me a million dollars. Sure. For one of your torch jobs. Yeah, only she carried the torch for me. <laughs> Get him out of here. Take him in the next room where there's no audience. <laughs> Keep your hands off me. Keep him off. Keep him off. All right, Tom, take over. How's going, Mike? How'd Billy Wyatt take it? Well, I was watching him. Uh, it registered great. He loved that radio bit. Yeah. He laid it on pretty thick, wasn't it? A hoodlum turning a radio on and a lineup? Yeah, well, I'll send you a picture. It's not only a radio, it's a camera. All I do is push this button, and it takes your picture. And Donovan, you have no idea how ugly you look from the suspect's point of view. <laughs> well, this is no beauty contest. I don't need any picture of me. I want pictures of the outfit that organized three fires in the past month. Yeah, and Billy Wyatt, he's a delightful character, isn't he? Don't take much character to be a torch. You still think he said it, huh? Well, the insurance companies aren't interested in what we think. They're screaming for results. Can you blame them? No. They're pounding gross in the arson squad here. Now they're after the whole department. Mike, I want pictures of an arson set up and the men doing it. If you can get a picture of the ring, there's probably a whole file on them. Well, what does Billy Wyatt hang out? Well, he's got a girlfriend, the one that held about him. Her name is, uh, Hazel Britt. She's a waitress. She works over in Jersey, Union City, on, uh, Burgerline Avenue. You can start there. It'll get you out of Manhattan where somebody might spot you. You know, this couldn't take time. Well, in this case, time is money, insurance money. That's why they want you to work with us. Union City, Burgerline Avenue, huh? Uh -huh. Hi, baby. Hi, Dutch. Hey, I didn't order anything yet. I know what you're eating these days. Do you know what I want to order? Your telephone number. Uh-uh. Not for fellows who live on donuts, and I had too much of that myself. When you start ordering porterhouse steak, I'll put my number on one of them. Did you find a job yet? Yeah, I got a job. Coming in here and looking at you. What else is on the menu, huh? Thanks. Boyfriend's here and he's watching. Listen, he wants to talk to you. What about? He says maybe he's got a job for you. Why should he have a job for me? He says he knows you. Listen, I don't know anybody in this town but you. You've been talking about me? Come on, Dutch, no way. Wait for what? I don't like talking to dames. Here, keep the change. Hi. Do you remember me? This your boyfriend? Uh-huh. I was with you in that little parade last week. Billy Wyatt. You know, it's a funny thing about me. I don't have such a good memory sometimes. Some days I wake up and I don't even remember my own name. Sit down, Dutch. Sit down. I'll talk to you. Come on. What are you doing over here in Jersey? I like the waitresses. You're real funny, aren't you? Not so funny. <laughs> Donovan give you a tough time about that fire you started? What fire? 
and the burning you gave him when you turned that radio on in the lineup last week. Billy Wyeth make you a pitch. Well, I spotted you coming in here, Dutch. Your girlfriend tells me what you've been eating. That ain't a fit diet for a healthy man. So? So I got a friend. Yeah? Well, congratulations. Well, what I mean is I think you can be helpful to each other. You can start eating good, real good. I got a big appetite. Very expensive. I got an expensive friend. Come on, I'd like you to meet him. Mr. Hartwell? This is Dutch Miller. Dutch, that's Mr. Hartwell. Oh, good of you to come by, Mr. Miller. What is this, a social visit or something? <laughs> no. Well, you like to get right to the point, don't you? What else we got to talk about? You're really hooked on that thing, aren't you? Look, turn it down, will you? The man wants to talk to you. Now, Billy seems to think that you'd uh, fit in with our plans. Fit in how, where, and doing what? Uh, you said you uh, came from Cleveland, I believe. Detroit, Detroit. Well, who'd you know there? I don't know anybody anywhere. And I don't carry any references. Here. And I don't drink. I'll take it. So you did time for arson, Mr. Miller. When was that? Listen, if I want to answer a bunch of questions, I'll go to the cops. Hold it! No, I owe him one for messing around with my girl. I said hold it, you two. Now get over there. <laughs> well, you're all right, Miller. Let's get down to business, shall we? Huh? I think we found out you can handle yourself. I'm still waiting. All right. I got a solo job for a good new torch man. Pick yourself up some cash. Yeah. And pick myself up a bunch of trouble. When I first breezed into this town, the cops picked me up and tried to pin an arson wrap on me. Uh, it's too cozy. I don't like it. Besides, I don't know you guys. Do you want references? Can't read. Suit yourself, but think about it, Miller. After all, if you don't know anybody in town, it's not going to be easy. You got to start somewhere with someone. All right. I'll think about it. Now, do I walk out of here? Or am I going to have to punch my way out? Miller will get along. Hey, where can I get in touch with you? I'll be in a restaurant in Union City, having a cup of coffee and a donut. Mm. Later. This is bad. Well, I know this one. Cliff Lyon, an ex-wrestler with a hooligan record. And I know the other one. His name is Amos Hartwell. He's a public adjuster. Very well established. No kidding. Public adjuster? What's that? Well, they're hired by the insured to uh, process claims against the insurance companies. They work on a percentage. Now, most of them are legitimate, and they can be real helpful. Now, some of them are fire chasers, like the ambulance-type lawyers, you know? I get it. And some of them set fires for their clients. Well, what some people won't do, huh? I never figured Hartwell. When will I get in touch with you? I don't know. I've been playing hard to get. Make him think I'm trying to get my price up. Another few days, I guess. Mike, Cliff Lyon is stupid. A stupid strong man can be mean. You stay out of trouble. You hear that? Now he tells me. I holed up in a crummy hotel room waiting for Hartwell to find me. It didn't take long. I'd made sure that Billy's waitress friend knew where I was. Sure took some scouting around to find you. Pull up a chair and sit down. All right. Bushes too? <laughs> you got expensive hobbies. I'm glad you understand that. Oh, I'm prepared for it. Well, Miller, you haven't had much else to do these past few days, but think. What's the decision? There's one thing that bothers me. Why do you need a new torch? You've got Billy. He's done jobs for you before. Sure, but he's too hot. Police are bound to call him in as a suspect. This time, he'll be really clean. Well, the police have got me tabbed, too. Oh, yeah, but it's a solo job. We pay you off and you get out of town fast. For good. 
Mm-hmm. How does it sound? I haven't heard anything interesting yet. Three thousand. Five. No, too much. Thirty-five hundred. Five. Now, come on. Be reasonable, Miller. Why don't you just take off? I don't work for pikers anyhow. Four thousand. <laughs> All right. That's a deal. What's the job? No, no, no. The customer wants to do the explaining direct. Why do I have to talk to anybody? I've done plenty of jobs for people I've never seen. Sure. But the lady wants to meet you. Personally. A lady? What kind of a deal is this? <laughs> oh, you'll like her. She's got a thing for tough guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One of that type, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that type. Well, why doesn't she go for Cliff here? He's big, tough, and mean, and ugly enough. That's for taking a swing at me at Hartwell's place. Right. Let's go see the little lady. Save it. Hartwell tells me you're very good at your work, Mr. Miller. What work are you referring to, Miss Cremor? The kind I'm paying you for. No, he's A1. I wouldn't have brought him along, Miss Cremor. I got a fire that says you won't make that point. You've got a bet. Hartwell, why don't you go look at the view from the terrace? I recommend it. All right. Mr. Miller, I came into and went through part of an inheritance from my grandfather. The major part of it is still to come, in a year. Now, a year can be a long time without money. How about a week? I see you understand. One cumbersome part of my inheritance is an old warehouse which had sentimental meaning to my grandfather. It was his first building. Now, it's on choice land and it's well insured. I'm enjoined from selling the property by the terms of the will. Of course, if uh, something were to happen to the warehouse, which would make it unsightly or a public menace. Do you follow me? I'm way ahead of you, Miss Claymore. <laughs> Good. I'm glad you're not sentimental. Seven. No roll. Yeah, baby. Six. You know, I believe in the future, not the past. But you've had such an interesting past. Your play, Mr. Miller. Seven. Guess this is not my day. <laughs> there are other days. You know, Mr. Miller, there's something about you that seems very familiar. Haven't we met before? Oh, no, no. I'm not from around this part of the country. As a matter of fact, I'm not from this world here at all. But you fit into it so beautifully. Hardwell. Mr. Miller and I have finished our business conference. He'll do very nicely. Now, Hardwell will give us all the information we need. He'll arrange the time, the place, whatever you need to know. There it is. A picture record of a crime about to happen. The principles involved, the location, and the motive is money. Oh, they're buttes, Mike. I thought you'd like them, Lieutenant. What time is the fire set for tonight? I don't know. They've been cagey about telling me. But as soon as I find out, so I'll phone it in. You know, Lieutenant, they're going to pay me before the job. That ought to nail them. Come, Doc. I'll stake out that warehouse just in case. Thank you, Lieutenant. Well, I better take off. Wait a minute. Well, here it is, Mike. The touch-off device. You see, you can't fool these fellows. So this thing really works. Of course, it's rigged right now, so it won't work. But an expert could fix it easily. So familiarize yourself with it, and good luck. OK, thank you. Where'd you get it? Out of our own museum. Mm -hmm. 
All right, we'll see. The layout appeared in the National Magazine. Look at the photographic credit. Mike Kovac. I know the name. What about it? I told you yesterday that Dutch Miller looked familiar to me. Now I remember why. He's Kovac, the photographer. What? This was the last charity ball that I chaired. I remember Kovac taking these pictures. How much did you investigate his story about Detroit? Yeah, but he was in the lineup, Billy Wilde. He must be a police plant. As a photographer, it's not hard to figure out what he's up to. Or is it for you? Fire set for tonight, 10 o'clock. Miller Kovac doesn't know that. Put it off. Tell him we've changed our minds. Oh, no, he knows too much, and he couldn't have made his move yet. Well, what are we going to do? All right. We'll let him set up the touch off. No. Now, don't worry, Miss Cramor. Dutch Miller may be in, but my Kovac won't get out. Who is it? Open up, Dutch. You so early. Well, there it is. Uh, all ready to go. Looks good, Dutch. Looks real good. All right, let's go. Now? That's right. Yeah, but you said tonight it's still light out there. Change of plans. We found out there's a private watchman on the block after eight. We'll get in the warehouse now and you can set the touch off for ten. All right. I'll meet you there in a half an hour. Mm -mm. We'll leave together now. Okay. Billy wants to go along. You don't mind. I want to watch how a real expert works. All right. Let's go. What time did Hartwell went to fire? Ten o'clock. That'll give us plenty of time to scatter. It's your baby. This looks as good a place as any. so it didn't complete the circuit. Can you fix it? Sure. Snap. All I gotta do is make contact with that wire. That'll do it. Yeah. How much you giving it? Eight minutes. That'll give us plenty of time. Take care of him. Go on, get out of here.
Yeah? Now, Mr. Hartwell, it's all set. Kovac will be out of your hair in five minutes. Okay. And you stay there till you make sure we get what we want, hmm? Right. We'll stick around where we hear the equipment coming. Call in, let me know when it does. Then take off. Check. I had a lump on the head. I decided that if I ever got out of this jam, I'd let Lieutenant Donovan get along without me. Oh, that timing device. It was gone. I knew they had it planted somewhere, and they meant it to work fast. I think we'll cut out of here when we hear the automatic alarm go off. Just one minute to go. Gotta be in here somewhere. Go on, find him. Come on! What out, you copper? get here early, just in case. You call this early? What happened to Hartwell and the sociable society lady, huh? We got a tail on them. I'll call in and have them picked up. Call back. Call back. Someday you're going to get a good. And oh, how I hope I'm at your funeral. Billy, when your time comes, there's going to be a big fire where you're going. Get them out of here. <laughs> 